Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explaining on to a MCQs questions on to a material science and metallurgy subjects. So in this video, I will select a most IMP 20 question list. So let us start. The tendency of the deformed solid to regain its actual proportion instantly upon unloading known as option a delayed elasticity option b perfectly elastic option c inelastic effect option d plasticity so basically if the recovery of the solid is interstitiously and complete so that will be known as a perfectly elastic materials in some case, the delayed elasticity is defined as a steady mode of the solid recuperation. Inelastic effect is when the recuperation of deformed solid is partial. And four, plasticity is a contradictory occurrence of a elasticity. So for this, the answer is perfectly elastic. So option B. Second question. What is the machinability index of soft cast iron? Option A 100. Option B 30. Option C 80. And option D 70. So basically for soft cast iron is a common constructional materials which processes a machinability index around 80. So the machinability indexes of standard steels, ball bearing steels and cast coppers are 100, 30 and 70 with respectively. So for cast irons or you can say soft cast irons it will be 80 number. So the right answer is option C. The next question. The elastic stress strain behavior of rubber is option A linear, option B non-linear, option C plastic, option D no fixed relationships. So for these questions the most common example of this kind of material is rubber whose stress strain relationships can be defined as a non-linear kind of elastic. Isotropic and is compressible and generally dependent on to a strain rate. So the hyper elastic provides a means of the modeling the stress strain behavior of such a materials or you can say for the rubber it will be indication as a non-linear kind of relationships. So the right answer is B non-linear. The next question which of the following factors affect the mechanical properties of the material under applied loads? So the option A content of alloys, option B grain size, option C imperfections and defects, option D shape of the materials. So basically contents of alloys which improves or decrease the hardness and the strength of the materials. Fine grain size improves the strength of the materials. Imperfections and defects reduce the strength of the materials and shape however the little or no effect onto the material. So as per the questions the right answer is that will be a shape of the material. So option D. The next question. The ability of the material to resist plastic deformation known as So the option A tensile strength Option B modulus of elasticity Option C yield strength And option D impact strength So for that The point of the stretching where it increased suddenly So that will be known as a yield strength It means what? The region where the stretch is elastic or you can say tensile strain is a force needed to fracture the material. The impact strain is the capacity of the material to resist a shock energy before a fracture. 
So the ability of the material to resist plastic deformation is known as a yield strength. So the right answer is option C. After this, deformation and that occurs due to stress over a period of time is known as. So option A, wear resistance. Option B, fatigue. Option C, creep. And option D, fracture. So basically creep is a time dependent deformation of the material under a stress. When wear resistance, fatigue and fractures deals with the deformations under stress without a time factor. So basically creep that will be related with the time dependent as well as it will be occurs at a higher temperature for longer period of time. So as per the questions the right answer is option C. The next question. Specific heat of materials is expressed in terms of Option A Joule per kg Kelvin Option B Joule per Kelvin Option C Watt per meter Kelvin Option D Meter cube per kg So the specific heat capacity of the materials is an intensive properties expressed always in terms of Joule per kg Kelvin. So that will be the thermal conductivity, heat capacity and specific volume are expressed in terms of watt per meter Kelvin, Joule per Kelvin or you can say meter cube per Kelvin correspondingly. So the right answer is option A, Joule per kg Kelvin. The next question. The property of the materials to resist any elastic deformation is termed as Option A stiffness, option B hardness, option C malleability and option D strength. So the ability of the materials or you can say shape to resist elastic deformation is termed as a stiffness of the materials. Hardness means the ability to cut on other materials. Malleability means converting into a flat surfaces and the capacity of the material to withstanding great force or pressure so that will be known as a strength. So here that will be as per the questions the right answer is stiffness so option A. The next question material having uh, some identical values of property in all directions can be termed as option A creep, option B anistropy Option C, isotropy. Option D, orthotropic. So the isotropic materials have the same properties into all directions. So the crystalline substance is isotropic into the nature. So the right answer is option C, isotropy. The next question. In which of the following test specimens is in the form of simply supported beam? So the option A isot test, option B charpy test, option C rockwell hardness test and option D brindle test. So in the charpy test a support beam specimen is being used. So the right answer is option B charpy test. Then next question. ASTM stands for Option A, American Society for Tensile Measurements. Option B, American Society for Testings and Materials. Option C, American Society for Tool Measurement. And Option D, American Society for Tensile Materials. So, ASTM stands for American Society for Testings and Materials. So basically ASTM develops technical standards for a wide range of the material products. American Society for Tensile Measurements are used to decide various standards into a tensile measurement. So basically ASTM that will be stands for American Society for Testings and Materials. So the right answer is option B. The next question. Brinell hardness test has a scale range of option A 0 to 10, option B 100 to 200, 
ऑप्शन सी जीरो टू वन थाउजेंड एंड ऑप्शन डी जीरो टू थ्री थाउजेंड सो बेसिकली ब्रिनल हार्डनेस टेस्ट हैज अ स्केल रेंज इन बिटवीन जीरो टू थ्री थाउजेंड सो द ब्रिनल हार्डनेस नंबर ऑफ द सॉफ्ट आयरन इज इन द रेंज ऑफ सिक्सटी सेवन टू फाइव हंड्रेड सो द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी एंड दैट विल बी जीरो टू थ्री थाउजेंड द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Which of the following properties will be more in fine grain structure? Option A, ductility. Option B, corrosion resistance. Option C, creep resistance. And option D, hardness. So, finer the grain size, or you can say lower the grain size, more into the number of grain boundaries. So, what happens? That will be more is a yield strength. the more is a ductility so this is the reason why we can easily draw a fine grain structure into the wire form so for this the right answer is it will be option a ductility the next question which of the following attributes explain why pure metals are not frequently used into a engineering applications so the option a hardness option b brittleness option c softness and option d luster so basically pure metals are soft and ductile so which is not ideal for most of the engineering applications therefore alloys are been used to fulfill the requirements as per the engineering applications so this explains why the pure metal is not good and that will be mixed with the impurities to makes an ornaments so due to the softness that will be not preferable so the right answer is option c the next what does aisi steel stands for option a american indian steel institute option b american indian society of iron option c american iron and steel institute and option d alloys iron and steel institute so basically american iron and steel institute that will be stands for as a aisi in an association established into america which produces steels aisi steels are used into the machine constructions they are otherwise known as a construction steels or you can say structural steels so the aisi steels which will be stands for american iron and steel institute so that will be the right answer is option c the next question which is the primary element used for making a stainless steel alloys option a chromium option b zirconium option d vanadium and option d indium so basically stainless steels contains iron and a minimum of 10.5 percentage of a chromium so this gives a greater resistance of the corrosion therefore stainless steels are often known as a corrosion resistant steels or you can say chromium bearing steels so in most of the stainless steels it will be around 10 to 11 percent of chromium is being present so right answer is option a chromium then next question addition of which gives stainless steels an austenitic structure option a molybdenum option b carbon option c nickel option d vanadium so basically nickel is added to stainless steels with a 3.5% to maximum 22% compositions to form a austenitic structure so which results in a highest corrosion resistance amongst all the stainless steels so they are also process with high strength and ductility so for this the right answer is option c and that will be nickel is being added the next question which of these is not an applications of hsla steels so the option a bridges option b automobile and trains option c building columns and option d leaf and coil springs so hsla steels known as a high strength low alloy steels so basically these high strength steels are primarily used as a structural materials or you can say into a construction alloys so they are used to reduce a weight on bridge 
automobiles, pressure vessels, building columns. So that will be not applicable into leaf and coil spring, which will be used into a automobile industries. So leaf and coil spring is not an application of HSLA steels. So the right answer is option D, leaf and coil springs. The next question, stainless steels with little carbon and no nickel are called. Option A, ferritic stainless steel. Option B, austenitic stainless steel. Option C, martin stick stainless steels. Or option D, duplex stainless steels. So basically, ferritic stainless steels are steels containing with 12.5% to maximum 70% of a chromium. So they are nickel free and contain very little carbon making up its compositions. So they are therefore better resistance to corrosion than a martin stick stainless steels. So the right answer is option A, ferritic stainless steels. The last question is, which term is used to define the temperature at which a substance changes its status from solid to liquid? So option A, boiling point. Option B, melting point. Option C, condensation point and option D, freezing point. So, the temperature at which the substance changes from solid state to liquid state that will be known as a melting point. So, each and every materials that will be having a different melting point. So, here the temperature of the solid and liquid are into equilibrium. The shift of the liquid state to solid state is known as a freezing. And the transitions from gaseous state to liquid state that will be known as a condensation. While that of the liquid to gaseous is known as a boiling point. So here it will be the questions is like this. Which term is used to define temperature at which the substance changes its status from solid to liquid. So that will be nothing but it will be a melting point. So option B. So I hope you understand this. If you like this, then subscribe and share Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. Thank you so much and keep watching.